We are finally back watching Formula 1 and I'm loving listening to FP1 while I write today's video. The other thing that is back is drivers complaining about the FIA's decision making. This season has been full of questionable decisions from the race directors in the never ending battle to replace Michael Massey. George Russell has had his say and we're going to examine what's been going wrong in the director's box, so don't go anywhere. The race directors have had a tough time at work since the 2021 season finale. Right up until the last few laps of the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Michael Massey had done a decent job of managing races from the director's box. Sure, he'd made a few decisions that the team and drivers didn't agree with, but they complain whether the rules are implemented properly or not. They just love a moan. In 2021, the pressure on this role was greater than ever, with team principals having an open line to him and constantly bombarding him with complaints. And when he wasn't answering radio messages, they emailed him mid-race. Looking at you, Toto Wolf. He trained under Charlie Whitting for a few years though, and had a pretty good idea of how to run things to keep the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the rules happy. Unfortunately, the pressures of the FIA and the teams wanting races to finish under racing conditions and team principals in his ear constantly led to the mistake that cost him his job. Whoever came in to replace him was going to find themselves under incredible scrutiny. That is exactly what Niels Wittich and Eduardo Fritas found when they started in 2022. Eduardo Fritas would lose his job after a recovery vehicle ended up on track at the Japanese Grand Prix, putting the life of every driver in unnecessary danger. So now we have Niels Wittich, who in Australia fell foul of the sport's desire to not finish races behind a safety car. That isn't the only thing he's got wrong this year though. We'll take a look at a few of his mistakes later in the video, but first let's see what the Grand Prix Drivers Association had to say. Mercedes George Russell, who is a director of the Grand Prix Drivers Association, or GPDA, said that the biggest concern was an apparent lack of consistency in some of the decisions. Asked for his thoughts on the calls race control made in Australia, Russell said that the drivers and the FIA needed a talk to clear up some issues. For sure, there's going to be a lot of conversations with the FIA to understand their views, he said. It's a bit of a challenging time, no doubt for all of us in that regard, and for sure as well for the FIA. They're not stupid and they're trying to do the best job possible, but things do need to be ironed out to understand where their approach is going to lie. This is an important thing to remember. The race directors have got a lot of stick the last few years for making mistakes, but their job is incredibly challenging. Managing 20 cars spread out over miles of track cannot be easy, especially when the rulebook that governs those cars is hundreds of pages long. Referees in every sport make mistakes, and there's never a situation where everyone is happy. If a decision goes against your team or driver, you're not going to be happy about it, are you? George finished by saying, we can't really be having weekends that are just totally dictated by what somebody in the race control office wants to do. We've seen a few crazy or rogue decisions being made recently. If they're consistent, that's absolutely fine, but it's the inconsistency that makes it challenging for the rest of us. Russell said he felt that dialogue between the FIA and drivers was not as good as it should be, and he highlighted the lack of consultation there had been in moves to cut back on DRS zones as an example. I think the overtaking is harder this year than it's been last year, explained Russell. I think as the cars have evolved away from the initial regulations F1 introduced, overtaking has become more difficult. Obviously, they're shortening all the DRS zones as well, which the drivers have had zero impact on. I've been a little bit disappointed, again, that we weren't in the loop on that. I'm not sure the FIA are aware that we feel that the overtaking is harder, yet they're basing the DRS off historic information. George's point about the overtaking is very valid. The teams have started finding ways around the regulations, increasing the amount of dirty air they create behind the cars, meaning that the drivers can't follow the car in front so closely. This means they have to be pickier with when they try to overtake, and are normally doing it from further behind the car they are overtaking. This is where DRS normally makes things happen, but if the FIA are taking away DRS zones, then that is obviously not helpful. What about the race decisions that the drivers are getting annoyed at? Well, this year's Australian Grand Prix provided plenty of examples for us to look at. The race was halted for the first time on lap 9 of 58, owing to a shunt for Alex Albon, who lost the rear of his Williams FW45 through turn 7 to nose it into the wall and bounce back over the curbs. While a safety car was deployed initially, the race was then red flagged. The FIA justified this due to the amount of gravel and debris that needed cleaning. 
The Grand Prix was red flagged twice more owing to incidents for Kevin Magnussen, and then a crash-strewn restart. After a delay, the race eventually ended behind a safety car, and the result was shaped by the previous grid, but with the car's too damaged to continue dropping down the final order. Early race leader Russell was hurt by the Albon red flag after pitting under the safety car to rejoin in seventh, only for rivals Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton to effectively earn free tyre changes when the race was paused. In his assessment of the handling of the incident, Russell questioned the FIA's decision-making. The Grand Prix Drivers Association director said, I thought the red flag was totally unnecessary. There was obviously quite a bit of gravel on the track, but there was a clear racing line. We've seen it far worse in the past. It's sort of reminiscent of the decision of last week in Saudi to bring out the safety car when the car was totally off the track. In the incident in Saudi, the race director couldn't see Lance Stroll's car on a camera, but the GPS was showing it stopped on the track, so for safety reasons, the race was red flagged. Stroll was off the track, and it was an unfortunate lack of camera coverage that led to the decision. If Lance had been on track, but they hadn't red flagged the race because they couldn't see what was happening, people would be angry as well. There really is no winning as a race director. George finished by saying, So I don't really know what's going on with some of the decisions at the moment. We're all trying to work together with the FIA to improve things, but it's seemingly a bit of a challenge. Meanwhile, McLaren driver Lando Norris implied that the red flags were not dictated by safety, but more about artificially creating drama to make the race more exciting. Having finished sixth, he said, The whole point of red flagging it, it feels like was to just put on a show. I'm the one driving the car, so I just feel like I could have been so unlucky through no reason. I easily could have crashed with Nico Hulkenberg at the end, because there's people going off and you're suddenly swerving and things like that. Because they try and put on a show, you just get unlucky and everything can be taken away from you all of a sudden. This seems to be the root of many drivers' complaints. They aren't happy about Formula 1 and the FIA trying to bring more excitement to the races, and from the looks of our comments section, neither are a lot of you. Formula 1 has existed to varying levels of success for many decades now, so I understand everyone's frustration with the governing body trying to add more excitement. It should be noted that this pressure to up the excitement isn't just coming from the FIA. All of the teams are in favor of races not finishing behind safety cars when the plan was first put in place in 2021. Not all the teams were upset about the handling of the Australian Grand Prix's red flags. Aston Martin's sporting director, Andy Stevenson, believes the FIA got every call right in Melbourne. The Australian Grand Prix ended the only way it could have, he told the team's website. It's clearly written in the regulations. We had a conversation with race control before it all happened, to let them know what our understanding of the rules was, and they informed us of the decision they were going to make, and that their interpretation of the rules was the same. There was a bit of uncertainty, but the FIA got it right. Just last year, fans and drivers were upset when the Italian Grand Prix ended under safety car conditions due to a delay in the recovery of Daniel Ricciardo's stricken McLaren, prompting some to ask why a standing restart was not used. You really can't please everyone. Andy Stevenson said the Australian Grand Prix showed the FIA has taken recent lessons on board. They've learned from things that have happened over the last few years, and they managed the Australian Grand Prix extremely well, he said. They are the only ones with all the information, and people need to remember that. There's always space for improvement, and that is what the drivers and teams want. But just saying the race director isn't doing a good enough job doesn't help anybody. Do you think the drivers will ever be happy with the job being done by the race directors? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, drive safe and bye for now.